Unfortunately, cinema cannot always be happy or fun. But when shock and horror occurs, that's when my expertise is called for. I'm Dr. Rev U. Ware. I talk about movies. And over the past nine years, I've compiled a library of the many ways we can be shocked and horrified. I've seen with my own eyes films that many consider too hard to watch. And now I'm here to share them with you. Hey y'all, it's Nolan, and welcome back to The Most Disturbing Films of All Time! Now last week I said something along the lines of... Next video I'll be reviewing the oldest film on the list and a classic that sparked an entire movement of shocking cinema. Initially, I was going to do the 1962 film Mondo Kane, but after realizing it wasn't really quite disturbing as much as intriguing and a little bit disgusting, I decided instead to do its most famous or infamous offspring, Faces of Death. Released in 1978, written and directed by John Allen Schwartz under several pseudonyms, Faces of Death is a shockumentary about the titular subject of death. The film opens with a monologue from fictional pathologist Dr. Francis Gross, played by Michael Carr, explaining his fascination with understanding the many ways that death can occur, and our relationship to it. We are then shown several short segments, all narrated by Dr. Gross, of accidents, hunting, corpses, and other death-related things, finally ending back in Dr. Gross's office as he wraps the entire piece up. Notable segments include several autopsy scenes, both a jumping suicide and a parachute falling accident, a dogfight, Holocaust footage, and finally, footage from the horrific accident of Flight 182 in San Diego. I was surprised with this one. Firstly, I honestly went in underestimating just how rough this was going to be. It's not just disturbing from the perspective of 1978, it's still today hard to watch. Who knows why, but I also expected the segments to gradually increase in potency, so when the movie opened up with just a straight up autopsy, I really realized what I was actually in for. Faces of Death is really good, like surprisingly so. Of course it's a bit dated and some of the moments are kind of camp and cheesy, but I actually think that kind of adds to the charm rather than taking anything away. The whole thing is well edited, the narration is good, the sound and music is decent, it's just all in all a good flick. Not a technical masterpiece, but for what it is, a late 70s exploitation film, it's well put together. I actually sincerely liked it, and I could imagine me and some friends getting together with drinks and watching it at like a Halloween watch party. I was also surprised how much legitimate commentary Faces of Death has. Like. Again, it's not the pinnacle of intellectualism or anything, but certain moments it tries to jump from those points and say something about vegetarianism, or the death penalty, or the horrors of racism and bigotry, and I appreciate that rather than just being disturbing merely for being disturbing, it tries to do something with that disturbing content. There's three things I think Faces of Death could do a bit better with. Number one, now if you don't know what the whole Mondo genre thing I'm talking about is, don't worry, that's going to come up in a later segment. But a problem with the Mondo genre is a blatant Western chauvinism and a kind of racist Orientalism. And I think Faces of Death mostly avoids that. However, there are a couple moments of what I like to call stupid white guy. One being when the movie says, in the country of Africa, the country of Africa. Also, there's the clearly fabricated Amerindian shrunken head scene, which so obviously influenced Cannibal Holocaust, it had to make me laugh. By the way, watch my review of Cannibal Holocaust from last week, link in the description. Number two, now we'll talk about in the next segment the whole question of whether or not Faces of Death is real, but suffice it to say, there are moments where clearly dubbed audio recorded in a very different location looping over the clip can be heard. Now I imagine a lot of people would just miss that watching the movie, but it definitely came to my ears and it did kind of take me out of it and I have to dock some points off for that. Additionally, the whole final segment with the ghost hunting thing, I just thought that whole thing was lame. I did not like it. I appreciate they were probably trying to transition us from what is arguably the worst segment of the film into what they wanted to be hopefully a kind of happy ending, but at over an hour and a half of runtime already, I feel like that entire segment could have just been dropped entirely. I wouldn't have missed it. 
Number three, there's a bit of a question on whether or not Phases of Death was as sensitive with its subject matter as it could have been. There's a couple moments with some odd musical choices, like in a scene showing a jumper suicide, there's like a swing jazz playing, and I don't know if that's just a weird choice or if that was meant to be funny, but I didn't like that at all. Similarly, there's two big controversies with two of the segments in the film. One is a segment of a cyclist who, in a traffic accident, and the movie keeps referring to the cyclist as a woman even though it was a man which shows a total lack of proper research and similarly the family of that cyclist have requested that segment be removed from the film and yet Faces of Death has yet to remove it after 44 years. Also, although the film was kind of slated to be finished by October of 1978, in September, after the Flight 182 accident, which if you have no idea it was when a Pacific Southwest Airlines flight in California basically crashed right above a neighborhood in San Diego, which scattered the remains of the victims, the dead bodies, all into the street of this neighborhood and even into some people's homes. It's a truly horrific event and is, to me, the most disturbing segment in the film. But anyway, the film was supposed to be released bef around that time when they saw that that happened and realized they could get access to the footage, they actually stopped production and recut the movie to include that footage. I can imagine some people would find that a bit ambulance chasey and insensitive. Um, I think maybe it would have been better to include that into a sequel of the series. Granted though, on the other hand, there's no reason for Schwartz to have believed there would have been a sequel, so I'll let you decide whether or not you think that particular issue is, you know, done in poor taste. So now on to the big question. Now if you're a fan of the series and have seen the later installments, or if you're just well researched on this topic, none of this is going to be surprising to you. However, if you actually saw the movie around the time it came out and haven't thought much of it since, you might be surprised to know that about half of the first Faces of Death movie is fake. The majority of the segments are real footage, however, a slim minority of the segments, though majority of the runtime because they're longer segments, are in fact either reenactments or straight fabrications. Um, similarly, the narrator character Dr. Francis Gross is a completely fictional character, if the name doesn't give it away, played by actor Michael Carr, as I mentioned in the synopsis. Though, to be honest, most viewers walking away from the movie, the moments that are going to stick in their heads are the ones that were real footage, and it's kind of just pedantic hair-splitting to go up to those people and be like, well, I'm actually 60 to 65 percent of what you've seen was real. Like, it's real enough to get the point across. In 1962, an Italian documentary featuring shocking footage, what we could call a shockumentary, was released under the name A Dog's World, or in Italian, Mondo Cane. The film is a series of vignettes featuring various cultural practices, religious rituals, and dietary habits from throughout the world, and most of these things would have been shocking or disgusting to your 60s Western audience. This film was actually very popular and sparked a whole movement of shockumentaries with the same kind of disgusting, disturbing, and shocking vibe, many of them shoehorning the word Mondo into the title in order to kind of associate themselves with this famous piece. And that's the context that Faces of Death is born from. Oftentimes called an American Mondo film, Faces of Death pushed that envelope by focusing its entire topic on death and gore, and exhibiting footage that most people would not have been able to see otherwise. The time period here can't be overstated. In the 70s and 80s, there was functionally no way to sate the morbid curiosity of what death and gore looked like. Unless you were a combat veteran, medical professional, or worked in emergency, you wouldn't have ever seen what it looked like for someone's arm to be cut off or something, and you never would have been able to. So something like Faces of Death and the numerous movies that came copying it were the only way for a lot of people to actually see that kind of stuff. The series itself took off, with now nearly a dozen installments, which by the way, I chose to only watch the first one, one for legacy's sake, and two because I honestly didn't feel like sitting through 20 plus hours of this. But anyway, the series took off and also inspired a number of copycat series with almost not the same title, such as Traces of Death and Faces of Gore. Hmm. 
The influence of Faces of Death into the underground cinema world is huge. As I've already mentioned, Italian Mondo films and Faces of Death were both hugely influential to movies like Cannibal Holocaust and other 80s exploitation films. And although it was inevitable that death and gore would end up on the internet, a lot of those early websites got most of their content from Face of Death series or its numerous bastard children. Love it or hate it, this film sparked a movement and the underground and extreme cinema world has to recognize its importance. Well, how does the first Faces of Death fit into our Disturbing Films ranking list? I actually struggled with this a little bit. Because it's an all-around superior film to Cannibal Holocaust and it features real death and gore, I felt like it should be above that movie. Um, not to downplay the disturbing nature at all because it is a disturbing film, I just don't think it tops Serbian film. However, after giving it more thought and thinking about the presence of the pretty graphic sexual assault in Cannibal Holocaust, I think it just ekes out and Faces of Death is right behind that. However, if you disagree and you would put Faces of Death above Cannibal Holocaust, I think that's totally justifiable. It's a disturbing film, but it's presented in a way that's honestly engaging. I would recommend it to anyone with that seed of morbid curiosity, just with the warning not to take it too lightly. So that was Faces of Death. Here's the film list as always. If there's something on this list you want to see soon or something not on this list that you really think should be, then leave a comment below. And of course, if you want to see the next episode of The Most Disturbing Films of All Time, as soon as it comes out, then subscribe to the channel. Next week, we'll be looking at a short film, one that explores possibly the most sickening and universal taboo. Thanks for watching.